and welcome to another live demonstration. Today, just continuing to celebrate the year of the dog, the Chinese year of the dog, I will be doing Dixie in pastel pencils. So the pastel pencils I'm using are actually a set which has been put together by Colin Bradley and it has all the colours which are brilliant for um, drawing animals. Um, I've just added a blue to the set just because I need it for a bit of colouring. The paper is the SAA practice paper, pastel practice paper. So this is a two-sided traditional paper. It's got a texture on one side and it's smooth on the other. So great for all types of drawing. Um, and with pastel paper, the really nice thing is you can choose a colour and I'm going to choose the colour and keep it for the background so I'm not going to need to fill the whole of the page, which for me works really well. You'll see that the picture's quite small. I have done it bigger, but it actually takes quite a long time to build up the layers. Um, so I've tried to keep the image quite small just to see how far I can get um, done. I've drawn out in graphite. Now, I do have some issues with the graphite sometimes because I'm going to be doing some very white areas, but I'll show you how I tackle those. The pencils, I will end up having them all in my hand, to be honest. I'm going to dark brown. I like to be able to see. I often have them this way so I can see the actual colour rather than the tips because sometimes the tips aren't quite the colour you're looking for. And with a pastel pencil, any pastel, I do find I have to really think about in which direction I'm working. Um, normally, I dot around when my brain is saying, oh, I need something there, I need to balance there, I need something there. But with a pastel pencil drawing, I do find I have to go this way because it's really difficult to go back in here when you've, you've put pastel on here because you just lean on it. I will use some crystal paper or I think it's called glycine in America, but it's a really useful paper. It enables me to lean on and without smudging the work. But I find these pastel pencils don't smudge as easy as soft pastels. Now, pastel pencils are paper dependent. They go well onto traditional papers and other papers like pastel mat, but something like a velour, they don't go readily onto the first layers. They may go onto second layers. So again, find out how they go. As we go in, I will need to sharpen and I'll show you how I can get this lovely fine point using the Derwent um, pointy pencil sharpener. So I'm going to start off with the ear and I'm just going to look at putting some colour down. Now the great thing about pastel pencils is you can alter and manipulate. You can lift as well. So all I'm doing is I'm looking at what colours I can see and plotting down Need some ivory, putting it on. So in her ear she's quite dark and she has lots of, oh I need some pink as well. So this is why I have lots of colours in my hand because you'll find, especially with pastel pencils, you tend to jump around a little bit in an area you're working on and keep swapping and using your different pencils when a colour is needed. I'm not going to use the black quite yet. I find it is quite harsh, but it is a really good colour to finish on. So this looks quite scruffy at the moment. It's amazing how quickly you can pull it back. I need the white. White I've managed to get to a really beautiful fine sharp point. And I know a lot of people say how do you get that such a fine point in pastel pencils and I'll show you it is, the pencil sharpener is fabulous for this. So the white you'll study if you can see here but it's catching the graphite and it's contaminating itself a little bit. Don't mind it here because I don't need totally clean white lines at the moment. But as I get around the head and around the body, I will show you what I'll take off the graphite before I put the white on. So putting on, I'm not going to blend using my fingers. I'm going to just keep layering and blending 
with the, I'll have them all in my hand in the end, blending with the pencils, so lots of different layers, which is nice just to build up the effects and it makes it that you can fiddle. You know, when you told in a watercolour to leave it, don't keep overworking it. With a pastel, it's actually quite nice to actually know that you're able to keep going over an area. You can slow down. You can think a little bit about what you're doing. Anita, yes. I have a question okay. about your drawing. Yes. And how did you get your drawing down? There's lots of ways. I copied this down, but you can use a trace down. So recently at a show, we use trace down a lot because you only have 45 minutes. So a trace down is a wax-free graphite. So you put dark side down and you just trace around a copy image, um, which is really useful tool to get on and play with your materials. So a lot of people will be stopped and say, I can't draw, so I can't do anything. Well, let's take away the fear of drawing get your image traced down. Leonardo da Vinci used a form of tracing, so I have no problem with it. Plus, if you've done a sketch or a, a, you know, an idea on a piece of copy paper or a light, thin piece of paper that you want to then transfer to watercolour, but you really think that sketches work well, why not transfer it yourself? Use trace down to transfer it. So I have sketched this out because I can, and I, I do use trace down. I sometimes do, but sometimes I like to just make sure that I'm keeping my drawing skills in. So this one I sketch down, but other ones I may trace down. It's all to do with how quickly you can get the image down. So it's just using a graphite pencil. Maybe I shouldn't have used graphite, um, but because I can, I've used it before and I know I can cover most of it with the pastel pencils, but graphite tends to resist or tends to contaminate, especially the very light colours, and so I'm going to rub them off as I do them. So yeah, I drew this one down. I know uh, Colin Bradley, when he does his, he does the square drawing, he does, he does squares out. Yeah, yeah, that's another way of getting it down, and I think I've done a live demo on how to um, transfer images on. Trace down is one way, copy in, or What's that called, the square? Square drawing method. Yes, yeah, square drawing method. And that's a really useful method. And again, it's an ancient method. So all of these are actually not new methods of getting your image down. If masters use them, they're absolutely fine for everyone else. And it takes that fear away from, I can't draw, so therefore I'm not going to try. Well, let's not draw then. Let's trace it down and let's get you to feel the products. So I got this down by just drawing and copying the image. I actually had an image, the image I'm working for is big, but I had an image same size. It's actually easier to, if you're copying from a photograph, is to have the photograph the same size as your drawing. You kind of get your proportions much better that way. The image I'm using, I've blown up to be able to see the tonal values and the colors. But when I'm drawing, you have the same size and then it just kind of works that way so like gary says there's lots of different ways the grid method grid method that's it grid, grid um, is one way and again many artists will use it it helps get your proportions it helps get everything in place it doesn't mean you can't alter while you're working just trying to look at a So I'm just going to pop on some colour here. And actually the colours I've got work really well with her face and her shape. Her eyes here. She's got so many wrinkles. You've got to remember all her wrinkles. She's, this is Gemma's dog, Dixie. And she, she just thinks that she's so squidgy. And if she, but when you're drawing her, she's got so many wrinkles. Don't think I've completed this yet. So the texture is leaving little gaps. <laughs> That's better. Now, I know people are going to be a little bit upset because I'm 
blew my pastel away. And it's not always advised to do so because you inhale the small fine particles of dust if you're not careful. I tend to do it because I don't want to be touching the pastel and using a brush to dust it off. And I, I do it quick enough and I blow it away. So if be aware that you, if I was able at home or in the studio, I can tap the back and let the dust drop off, but this is all taped down and I can't move it. So I'm going to have to use, just blow it off and use that way. So this ivory, ivory is a great color for actually all um, pastel drawings because it's not as harsh as the white and it's great for blending without adding that harshness. So not blending my fingers, but with the ivory, I tend to blend. I'll go back in with the black just to make sure I keep the dark tones. And you can see how many layers I'm putting on here. Just keep looking at where the dark areas are. So in her face, she has a big wrinkle here, and then a dark area here, and a dark area here. So her eye, she's got a nice big wrinkle here. So her eye's quite dark because she's, her face is squashing it up. And dark here. I'm just trying to visualize the wrinkles. I don't want them too harsh, so I might go in with this one. So I've got all my pencils out now. Just means I can see what I'm doing. So with the wrinkles, I'm just adding color where you would see the shadow. And if it's too harsh, I can know I can take it back. So over her eye, she has where she's frowning, she has a wrinkle in here. So these darker colors I know cover the graphite. But when I come to the top, I'm going to have to rub that out. Nope. That one. If I had a pot here, that would probably stop me having to hold on to them. But that would be difficult for filming because you can't see so now, just bringing, she's a short-coated dog, so that's actually quite easy. I'm not having to look at her, the direction of fur as much. I know the fur's going up this way, and I am following the direction of the fur, but I'm not totally having to worry about long curving fur because she's a soft-coated, flat-coated animal. Hopefully Gemma will be watching, watching her baby. I think she, she said it herself and she told her kids, dog comes first, then the kids. She's less trouble, I think. Okay. But you see, I'm actually, I'm working this way round, which I don't normally I do normally dot around. So even with the black, it's really nice. You can work quite hard to get hard tones, but you can work very softly. And it, it's not as harsh on top of the color you've already put down. Just dotting around. The texture of the paper works fabulously with this soft coat. It's actually doing me a favor. I need to soften this, so I'm going in with the ivory just to soften some of the harsh lines. I don't know if you can see as well how much it's blending, but I can. Right, those lines are a little harsh. I want the, I want that colour. I've got no room in my hand, Gary. <laughs> there you go, that's a much nicer, softer. And the reason I've made this image a lot smaller than the, the one I did originally is because I knew how much time it takes. See how much time I've already taken just to fill in this small area. 
because she has wrinkles and I want to so normally I would really work continue to work on that I'm probably jump on and move on so it may not be as polished and finished as I would like but hopefully I can get most of it done so now to the white let me do the bit on the head so this is where I said I would take off the graphite so I'm just taking it off because I can't get such a clean white finish now I'm just putting her white on, and this is really easy, you can just put it on. Not so bothered around this edge, because what I can do is have the browns go into, but with the white I just need to make sure I've taken that graphite off. I'll take this white over and in, so they're not separate. And I'm going to put some shading in. So the white across here, she's very white. She's got a big wrinkle here. Shadowing. What I'm going to do is drop all them. I've got a pink. And if I put the pink on first and you'll see I'm using the pencil in a different way I've dropped it onto its side because the face though it's white you can it's quite fine hair so you still have the pinkness of her nose coming through the pinkness of her flesh underneath so I drop that on it's denser up here so I don't have the need for the pink But what I'll do is I'll put it on and then I can go in with the white and the grey. So not quite following the direction of hair and again I'm just taking off some of this graphite, just taking it down a little bit and I might use the pink to give me a line because I know that can blend in. So it's also knowing your tools. So you can see how that's blending in now, giving nice soft lines. I'm going to use the grey, not only to bring out her freckles, these different marks, but just at the moment to keep those lines of wrinkle. Now it doesn't matter if I'm completely the same. What I will do is I will pay close attention to the area around her nose because she has specific freckles that the owner will recognise. Um, and that is when you're doing an animal, those key points are special, you know, the dot in the right place, the blaze down the middle in the right place, all help ensure that that dog is recognisable as that owner's dog. So when you're doing portraits, they're just things that you you can think about what are the key features of the animal dark here but I'll put grey on for now Anita, yes sorry, did you see what I called today's live stream no I didn't have a chance because I was in a meeting because I love my alliteration go on then I went for pounders pitch pastel pencil pooch painting well, that's a lot of alliteration <laughs> you must have had a lot of fun with that one oh, Gary yes. took me hours <laughs> So, I know I hadn't seen it, but thank you for that. You're welcome. That's a good job my surname helps you with your alliteration. It's good, it's most useful, yeah. especially with pastels. With pastels. Um, yeah, so I know I hadn't seen it. Well, well done. You will notice that any of the um, information that goes out, he does try to use alliteration. Some of the time it's quite fun being able to do have some input sometimes, but I was actually in a meeting this time, so I didn't see. But coming up with the right words to describe what you're doing can be fun. So the black for the nose. Now, because this paper's textured, the beauty about it is it leaves those little white spaces. 
which is absolutely perfect on the nose. It means I have to do a lot less work. Now I'm looking at her wrinkles here. It's going to be very dark into here, but much lighter here. So just using a light touch with the black. I can go back in. It's much easier to keep it softer and then go back in than it is to do it harsh in one go and find you struggle to take it back. So big wrinkle across the top there. Now that's quite harsh, but I know I can take that back by just blending. And very softly, I might use the gray instead of going too harsh in my hand. Very softly, I like using this little swirly texture. It just helps to blend the pastel that's already on there. So I'm just going up here because I can see that she has wrinkles here and texture. So this one I want to sharpen. This is where this pencil sharpener is fabulous. It sharpens all pencils to a point. Every now and then it's best to sharpen a graphite because that helps clean the blade. Um, with pastel pencils I'm always quite slow and I'm a little careful just to check but it really does sharpen to a point. You can have it taped to a table, but I need to just move it. Get in there. I'm probably being a bit too gentle. Yep, it's nearly there. So it's been able to, I can use a knife. I've used a knife many a time, but look, at that and I can possibly if I was a little bit more careful even get it more sharp so this is great you just take off the back get rid of any dirt make sure your blades are clean and any pastel pencil which it does break because they're so soft to core you just use a paper clip I've always got one on hand just to pop it out pop it back on and off you go again like I say if you do a graphite pencil every now and then if you use a lot of pastel pencils it keeps the blades clean, so really useful. And you can see what a nice long point you're getting. So just gently, softly looking at the direction of her wrinkles. And again, if I've done it too harsh, I can easily go back with another layer. She's quite dark up here. So like I say, this is probably not going to be as polished as I would normally like it to be because I, I it takes time constraints. So if I do half of it and we take a break, then we can come in and have the other half. I did find the other half wasn't as time consuming, but it's getting all these lovely wrinkles. It's lovely. So I'm very light with black because I don't want to overwhelm this white area. Put it on, let's drop in the grey so it's not too harsh. And here underneath, thinking of the shadow. And I'm going to go in and blast it with the white just to make sure I'm blending all these areas. Grey freckle there, let me put the freckles on. So she's got a grey freckle here on her nose. So this is where I'm going to just make sure that I look at the shape of her freckles. And down here, comes along the mouth here, she's got a pink patch there, dark into her nose. So again, using that swirly motion just helps me with the texture of the paper to fill in. And then she's got split little pink there it's a bit too harsh so I'll take it back with white gray along here and again I can go back in with the white and just make sure you have the tone you're looking for it's a lot of it is a case of that's why I have my pencils in my hand like you just keep swapping from one to the other I, sh I can see the direction of the fur is going this way. So just 
add the white. And you can see with the pink underneath how that helps. I'm pushing quite hard, pushing a lot of pastel around. Black. So black under here. All of these little touches, and I'll go back and I will think, ah, oh, yeah, at the end, you can put some finer lines on. So very dark here. And like I say, because I'm using the textured paper, I can very gently use the same black, just swirl it around. So dark under here, where her nose is pushed back, they have their nose pushed quite back. And then I'm looking again at, do I have this? dense enough across the top. So all you're just doing is you're using your reference picture regularly. So you can see how this is picking up the texture of the paper. Let's darken the nostrils. These are one of the darkest areas. Let's go back and darken here. I will often come back and darken, but I can see She's got kind of a little shape there on her nose. Just that little swirly, picking up the texture of the paper. This helps give me that texture for the nose. <laughs> okay, now I can see here, maybe needs a little bit more. Let's try the ivory and see if I can bring that back a little bit. I might have pushed the texture too much. If not, we're going with the white. You can see how that just suddenly gives me some of those highlights. So as you would do with a soft pastel, you can blend and you use your pencil to blend totally dependent on the surface you're working from, which way blends best. I'm trying not to blend with my fingers as much as I want to. It's quite a small picture, so it's easier for me to blend with the pencil. So freckles are a little darker. Let's bring those out a little bit. But because I've put the grey underneath, it makes the black a little less harsh. I need the pink and the white. But you can see how it's starting to pull together. Like I say, normally I would take a little bit more time just to but see that's taken what half an hour already. So let's see how quickly I can push on. Then we'll have a break. That wrinkle, so she's got a big wrinkle there. She's got another wrinkle here. So her face, let's have a look. Ah, she's got a face coming down here. And she's got a wrinkle here. It's just so wrinkly. Might have missed one or two. But I'm not overly bothered with that because n unless you're doing something that's really specific, people can't always see the image you're doing. And picking out the freckles in the right place, it, the owner will recognise that. But, you know, some points, dogs look very similar to each other. It's just these little key features which I'm making sure that I pick up. Uh -uh -uh. So the lip goes down here. I found myself going like, if, when I'm drawing it, I was going, because it was just her, her downturned lip was just making me do the same. So I'm trying not to remember not to do that. So let's pick up her freckle here. And pink under here. Because that, I can see the pink. So it's amazing what colours you can pick up in an area you think is just white. I'm not white in here. I'm not, I'll do the shadowing 
in a minute. I just want to, I'm, I'm rushing, I'm trying to get as much done as possible so I don't have to leave it half done. Gary says I've got as much time as I want, but to be fair, you just don't want me to sit here talking about the same thing over and over again and just take my time because it will take a few hours and I will probably just get really distracted and just sit and just pack the drawer and I'll forget to talk and say things. So I'm just going under here darker because this is sitting on, I think, the arm of the sofa. What it's helping me do is just judge the darkness. Okay. If I do this area then, then we'll have a break and then I can pick up on this area. So, pink. So the pink is, you get in the as the under colour. It also gives me a chance to look and think about maybe some tonal values that I need to add, areas that I need to work on, add some structure to. Okay, white. So you do notice with pastel you use a lot more colours than you do with other wet mediums where you can often mix your colour. Fill out a face with the white. I can go back in, I can alter, I can add texture, which I think I need to do. So let's bring out the freckles again. They're not quite the black, but I had a layer of grey, and then I had a layer of black, and that I've lost a pink bit there. So let's see if I can bring that back, because that's a key feature. Maybe not. Her nose, nostril comes down past that. Yes, they're good. That's better. And around it. So bring out this bit here. I'm just keep looking back at the dog. Keep looking back at the shape of these. Soften in here bit too much texture for a very soft shape. So using the grey to blend and soften. I'm going to use the texture in the sofa but if I keep layering I can actually create a much softer texture in the face. And it's often about texture, not always the value. If I can create that to be really nice and soft and silky, like apparently it is, it's just very squidgy and soft and velvety, this part. So just adding, might need to sharpen this, just adding some flecks of detail. Just to show the direction of the fur. And there's some fur that goes on here. Let me finish this side, put some grey in, grey here, white, this grey around here, grey in her folds, it's a bit darker under here. Back in with the white and then we'll have a break because it would just give me a chance to look and think about what else I need to do. Okay, so I think that's time for a break. Um, this bit is, I can fill that in quite quickly. Um, so join us in a few moments and we'll continue and hopefully be able to build up the rest of Dixie and finish her off.
Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA is here to inform, encourage and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits, including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalogue, with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland. A devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started, as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. The best thing to be a that member is, is the inspiration of the magazines, to be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. It seems like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking. Just join. They'll love it. Hello and welcome back. In that short break, Gary's told me that there are people watching from all over the world. What was it? Canada, UK, Namibia, uh, Spain. Spain. So welcome to everybody. Um, Australia. Australia. Gosh, that is really literally to all ends. So welcome. Um, thank you for watching and welcome. So I've got a chance to work on the dog fill it out so because I don't want to be leaning I'm just going to do this quick area of sofa and this is where I added the blue so you don't get a blue with the set you get some fabulous browns and ochres and colors that work well with animals but you just don't get that extra color I needed so again I'm using the texture that's really, that's why it's really easy to be able to pick up. Oh, Anita. Yes. Uh, Paolo's in Portugal. Portugal. Uh, Rani is in Egypt. Wow, There's Egypt. People in the States. Yes, it really is all over. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy and make Dixie famous, because Gemma will love that. So you can see now how I'm picking up the black I had on. And it's not as harsh as it was. Just using the blue to add that extra bit of colour. But the blue also works with the ochre colour you have in the animal. So even though the sofa is technically blue in this case, you know, just be aware of your background colours. The blue works. Um, I know it's probably a specific sofa for the family. So you've got to consider that as well. But then you consider where you maybe put a background colour that helps balance. Um, I'm not going to do a background colour. I've chosen this colour, even though it doesn't show the white off as well as it might. I think it works. I think it harmonises the whole picture. So she's leaning her head on the sofa, which means she's squidging up her face here. Which I'm going to darken just to try and just make it look like she's it's squidgy and round make it a little bit rounder so even when you put more pastel on more value it actually then helps you look at other areas That's squidgy so I've got light on my so she's quite dark under here now where the shadow is so let's work on that I'm just making that a little bit more dark just because it is dark it's under her chin and then I think I need to just work on here and this is because I've put those tones on here. It just is now helping me think about 
the roles, how, how a face is fitting onto. So adding colour isn't all about just adding colour. It is about, you can see your tonal values. Using the side of the pencil helps me pick up the texture. Okay. Right, what I'm going to do is I need to sharpen. Like I say, fabulous sharpener. We've used these in workshops and they're great when you're using a pastel workshop, pastel pencil workshop, just to be able to just get a really nice sharp. And you saw how quickly I did that. And I know for pastel artists, pastel pencil artists, how important that is. Probably should do the same with my white, but I'm not going to. Right, I I'm going to work on this area now. I can always come back to this. Let's see if I pick up some colours. Ivory. Right. Going to lean on my crystal paper now. Right, I'm going to work on her eye. I know you can't see it in the photos so well it's just quite dark but I can just see that she's actually looking at us with this eye so I want to keep a little bit of that coming through rather than darkening it off because she's just going and I'm very comfortable thank you it's a bit flatter on this side the wrinkles are obviously fallen she's laying that way but over her brow she's created dark shadowing which I'm going to do with the brown for now dark shadowing here so that's quite densely dark which it isn't at the moment but it will be something I'm going to look at bringing it down here and she has that shape there, but it also comes around here. Anita, yes. I have a question for you uh, from Liz. Yes, hello in Liz. In Maryland, uh, USA, she wants to know, uh, what do you do if the pastel gets dark? How do you lift it off? You can use a, a putty rubber. I actually haven't brought one. Try lifting it off with a putty rubber. Some people use, you know, soft bread if they make it into a dough. I've seen people do that. But a putty rubber is a really useful tool, just gently lift it off like this. I will use a white um, eraser. In fact, I can show you. Just make sure it's clean. It depends how dense you are and what area, but you can lift off. What I would do is try and find an eraser that works for you. So see how that's lifted off? I know this will work, but often a putty rubber helps take back. Um, you can cut bits of this off to create it short or the Tombow erasers with that lovely fine line. Because I'm using the traditional paper, I know it's fairly easy, easy to lift, but pastel mat's quite good. You can actually really be tough with that, but some papers are a little bit more delicate. Practice, the thing is to practice, um, see what lifts off. Um, but I think pastel's quite a forgiving medium because it's dry. It just allows you to be able to, you know, work on, manipulate. We should probably say kneadable eraser for our international audience. What did I say? Putty, Putty rubber. rubber. Yeah, kneadable eraser. Um, the soft ones that you can really mould. So using the crystal paper or glycine, I've seen it called glycine, just to rest on. And what I will also do is, once I've finished with it, I will use it, bit of tape all the way around, and then that will protect um, the pastel. I find pastel pencils actually quite robust because you, you've pushed it into the surface, um, but you want to protect it from dusting off. Um, light fastness is not an issue with pastel. Pastel is one of the purest of pigments mediums.
because it's it's pigment with either clay or chalk to create the pastels and it, it, it just gives you that lovely colour. Again, try different pastel papers. We have the trial pack at the SAA and the reason that was put together was because without having to buy a whole pad or a whole pack of different papers, it gets expensive and you don't always you know, know what paper is going to work for the medium you're using. So we have a trial pack, which gives you one sheet of lots of different papers, lots of different surfaces, to be able to try and see which one actually works for you. Because, you know, you buy something and find it's not working. It just sits in the shelf. So I'm just looking. I've got light shining on my... Um, original image so I can't see it fully need to move I can't see what's happening here well so because I can't see what's happening here I'm kind of going to have to make it up a little bit but it doesn't really matter I'm looking for my black I haven't picked up my black using this swirly technique just to So I think what's happened is her her ear is folded over here. This is why it's really good if you are doing pet portraits is to actually take pictures yourself. Because what you can do is you can, you know, close up on areas that you know you want detail from. I can't see fully what's happening here. Doesn't matter. Um, I can kind of judge and work with it which is what I'm doing so but if you take your own pictures you can then get a clear picture it's much easier than having um, the owners give you um, photographs which they've taken sometimes they're fabulous and you can work with it but other times it's just very difficult to see that little bit I can't see how the folds are working in that ear doesn't mean I'm going to do them but I need to understand them so you can see with the eye I'm just going to darken it down but because I've put that brown on first it's just given that eye shape because she is looking out she's not all black I'm going to white just see if I can didn't work so darken that off and maybe blacken the ear you can see how she's come together it's not working at the top it's not dark enough okay just a little bit of color too much so I can take that back again I've lost the highlight, but she doesn't have a huge highlight. She just has the suggestion that the eye is there with the shadow. Okay, let's darken this area, but not too much. So I'm going to a brown instead of a black. Bring up that value. I just love this textured paper because it's doing the job for me. It's given me that texture I'm looking for. That's always useful. What colour do I want? That one. Okay, wrinkles. Wrinkles there, a wrinkle there. So I'll have a corresponding wrinkle in the white. Just add some just a bit of texture. Let's work on this bit because I can see. But you can see how I, I can dot around. I will try not to because I'm going to lean on it. Bring out some ivory. Like I say, the ivory is fabulous for 
um, blending. I want to add some texture. I might be overthinking this a little bit. I think she needs more wrinkle there. I'm just trying to give her a little bit more definition than the very flat colour I can see from the photograph. So again, working from a photograph, I'm actually adapting it a little bit because I'm not seeing everything. And I can go in and just create a little bit more texture, but I'm going to move on into the white. Now, again, this is white against that cream background, so I need to take off. I'm going to have to drop the all there. So this eraser I know works, and even now I've got grubby finger marks all over everything. But this is where it's difficult. I'm not getting a <sighs> being able to blow. So being careful not to touch the pastel. I rub it off. There are lots of good erasers on the market. I'm trying not to do it with my fingers because I know my fingers are going to be dirty. So, you know, a, a drafter's brush um, or you can get an eraser with a brush on the end. That's really useful. So putting in the white, it's not going to stay white, but that part of her fur is white. <laughs> Grey, and let's just add some value. And you'll see I'll use grey, then I'll use the white. Because the grey is quite harsh, it's helping give some tonal value because it's not going to be the lightest area. But it may be a little too harsh. Another thing, I just realised what I did there, I turned my pencil round. So often to be able to keep a sharp point, if you turn your pencil as you use it, you keep a sharp point rather than flatten the end. Back in with the grey, the white, sorry. And again, I naturally do it. I just remembered to, to tell you. But I naturally turn my pencil as I'm working with it. And I think, as harsh as it is, I need to go back in with the black. So take the black down here, very lightly use the edge and then pick up just very, very softly a little bit of tone up more tonal value and the collar I wasn't going to put this in but I think it actually works and adds to the shape it's really easy to do it has a white split down the middle but I'm not going to put that in Dogs change their colours regularly enough that you can alter a little bit. Again, I want it quite smooth just to give a little bit of texture. It's not dark enough under here. It's not giving that dark gel. But this is now where I can suddenly think about adding that extra darkness. If I do it too soon, I'm just going to lose it, but now I can actually bring it back. Okay, go back in with the ivory, like I say, great blending colour. And now see how that softens the leather on the collar, makes it much smoother, much softer. Back in again. All I'm doing is I'm layering, I'm adding pastel colours. And the more pastel colours you put on, the more, less of the texture you see underneath. I use the texture, 
but occasionally I need to create a different feel. Okay. Right. Let's darken here. Go back in. I want to darken, but I want to keep colour. Um, what have I got? to make really dark in here because that is one of the darkest areas so I do need the black you'll see I keep going in keep re-referencing I like that colour for down here because it isn't light there there's no <sighs> so a head needs more tonal value a bit more just a little bit really suddenly makes the face shape work better. Let's go here, softly with the wrinkles. So like this is where you will start to jump around, start to look at areas that you think you've missed. And this is where the time, you can take the time a bit more. It's not bad. I think I've done that in an hour. I don't want to overly complicate things, but I do feel I need a little bit more shadow here. Very lightly. The black. Oh, it's grey, actually. That wasn't the black. A little bit more here. Bring back those freckles, which I've lost a little bit. She's got a freckle here. Make sure the gels. I know what I did forget in the last one. I forgot the whiskers. Whiskers. It's quite nice having definite wrinkles. Because you can just work on them. They have this brow bit as well. I think I might stop. I can probably see pieces that I need to work on. But I'm going to stop because I think that's a good rendition of the the dog. I want blue. Just I was going to stop. Sorry, Gary. Right. I just want to add a little bit more blue. So using the end of the pencil. That again helps keep the point. So using pastel pencils on a traditional paper uh, using the texture of the paper um, to create these light areas and then lots of layers will help smooth that off. I hope you enjoyed that. This is Dixie celebrating the Chinese um, New Year, Year of the Dog. Um, and join me later in the week for another live demonstration. <laughs>